Hey, what's up guys? This is Blue Dove with Overclock.net. Uh, in all reality, <laughs> that was not a real lightsaber. I just thought it'd be kind of a funny little play on uh, words. This is the ECS Z270 lightsaber motherboard review. All right, running all the specs of this Z270 motherboard is a Z270 chipset, which supports 6th and 7th gen Intel CPUs on the LG 1151 socket, so that's gonna include i3s, i5s, and i7s. I will be running uh, Intel um, i7-6700K. Uh, it does support four DIMMs of dual channel, 3200 DDR4 memory, up to 64 gigabytes in capacity. It has three PCIe 16X slots. It also has four 1X PCIe slots. Uh, it does feature 8-channel HD audio by Realtek featuring the ALC 1150 uh, controller. Um, features the killer E2500 gigabit uh, controller on there. Uh, and then it also has 6 SATA ports supporting RAID 0, 1, 5, and 10 support. Uh, it has one M.2 SSD that features uh, NVMe or PCIe Express. Uh, support so that's at 4x speed also with Intel Optane support uh, It also features a single U.2 connector uh, which runs at PCIe 4x only uh, And then as far as USB ports, it does support two USB 3.1 ports uh, And then six USB 3.0 ports and also it has seven USB 2.0 ports So um, the feature package on this is pretty feature rich for I would say the fifth largest provider of motherboards in the world um, ECS is just a company you just don't think about as far as producing high-end gaming uh, motherboards so I guess we're gonna get this thing unboxed and check out what's inside all right so here's the box here it features a nice gold leet finish on it Z270 lightsaber gaming motherboard Intel Optane memory ready so that's pretty cool um, let's go ahead and get this thing on box here so pop the top here and you're good with the motherboard first and foremost. So the motherboard is really nice. You definitely see the different phases here. Nice beefy VRM heatsink. Um, and then with the Leet uh, branding over here too. It does have three uh, X16 slots. It does go eight by eight by eight by four if you do it that way. It does support uh, Crossfire technology as well too. S slide need not apply. So. Uh, the overall aesthetic of this board is really nice. It actually has a black PCB, which is nice to see. Um, and then it actually, from the first glance, it does have buttons everywhere. So uh, these buttons, you know, start, reset button, has an LED debug readout. Uh, this looks like this is a postcode voltage shifter. So you can actually shift through all your postcodes here without having to wait for it to start up and write it down again. So that's actually pretty nice. Um, and it does feature eight, eight pin uh, CPU EPS plug up here. So it tells me that overclocking is pretty friendly with this motherboard, which I'll be definitely putting through the paces here. Um, let's go through the back IO here. So let's put this in front of the camera here. The back IO, uh, you start off with two USB 3.0 slots with a uh, PS2 port. Uh, another button over here. Looks like a clear CMOS button. Um, and then you get a display port, HDMI, your optical out, two more USB, uh, looks like possibly 3.0, four USB 3.0s, two more USB, your killer NIC, and then your eight channel HD audio featuring the ALC 1150 um, chipset from Realtek. So um, looking on the board here, you do get that one trace that you can actually change the traces of as far as multicolors. Um, and then you can actually see here where it supports the AMD Crossfire. So uh, taking a, another look on the side here, you see the six SATA slots or SATA ports here with the U.2 connector. Um, here is the USB 3.0 header. Would have liked to see a right angle header, but not the end of the world. Um, and then followed by the debug LED here on the very bottom here. Uh, and then as far as the back of the PCB, not too much going on here. The M.2 slot is located on the very bottom here. It's got a nice location. I know some of them actually put it right underneath the video card, which is kind of hard to get to. So um, I actually like it down here. So in case you swap out your M.2 PCIe NVMe drive, that was a mouthful. 
um, you can basically swap it out no problem. There is a switch down here. Um, I'm guessing this is a switch between the two different um, BIOSes if you want to. So you have one extreme or one factory, maybe more for like debugging and things like that. So that's pretty cool. Other than that, let's get this into a system and see how she clocks. I'm hoping to get up to 4.7 gigahertz like my previous Z170 classified. Um, I don't really think this is going to do much different, but uh, it looks to be a nice clean board design. Would fall into any aesthetic build, no problem. So let's get to it. All right, conclusion time of the Z270 lightsaber motherboard. Um, it's an all right motherboard. It's about average. It does overclock quite well. I found the BIOS to be a little clunky, a little dated. Uh, Asus, EVGA, uh, all the other manufacturers have done a really good job with fine tuning their BIOS that it just seems a very clunky experience in terms of manual overclocking. Those of you that want to overclock via software in Windows, it's a little problematic. You're gonna to have to have a DVD uh, drive installed. I don't know about you, but I don't have anything installed. I didn't bother installing it because I thought it'd be very cumbersome to pull out the DVD drive uh, that they actually have uh, included with the box but not offer any sort of way to download it from the internet, which is kind of stupid in my opinion. Uh, should be able to at least offer that link to be able to not have to install a drive if you don't have a drive already to use the, the overclocking utility that they're providing you. So whatever, I overclock during the BIOS, it's not a big deal for me. But um, main key differences between the Z170 uh, lightsaber and the Z270 lightsaber are three main things. U.2 inclusion on the Z270, a better audio DAC, um, and then there is no SATA ports down here underneath these two SATA ports over here, and that's because of the U.2 connector. Other than that, it's identically the same as the Z170 lightsaber. So uh, they basically rebranded the board, added a few different features, and then call it a day. So in terms of flame rating, I would give it a three and a half flame. It didn't really jump out and say, hey, this is an awesome high-end motherboard at a good value price. It's an okay motherboard. Um, it does it does the job, um, but it doesn't do anything in terms of flashiness. There's no RGB integration, which you're seeing on lower-ended uh, uh, motherboards nowadays. So to integrate or not integrate that kind of thing in is kind of silly, but again, if you, if you are late to the game like ECS is... All right, guys, I'm Blue Devil with Overclock.net. I'm going to get on out of here. Go ahead and toss us a like and a subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.